ପହଞ୍ଚାନ୍ତି ଆମ Yes, thank you. I um, hope you're well as well. <laughs> yeah, very well. <laughs> And uh, how's your meditation practice is going on? You are daily practicing. Any um, problem you are facing when you are practicing by yourself? Yeah, I have... Um, I When I was doing the uh, Om Namah Shivaya um, the other day, I noticed that um, it was like there was not much energy in it and I was feeling a little bit um, not lazy but not as energetic. I wondered if it had to be a bit more vigorous um, because it just felt like my mind and body were not connected and then generally the thoughts, you know, the mind wandering um, Yeah, so I just wondered if you had any <laughs> anything to say okay. around that. I understand. Uh, the thing which you want, that uh, the mantra should be energetic, immediately you get the, you know, energy within you. That never going to happen when you do the self-practice. It happened when the, in the group, when you are practicing, because of other people in the group, everybody is chanting together. It infused the energy into you. And you feel, or if even you are not connected, you feel connected with me, right? But when you're doing the self-practice, that never going to happen. Why? Because chanting the mantra or the desire you are, whatever desire you are having, which is too generated by your mind, that I should feel energy, uh, energetic, I should feel a little bit of calmness, I should feel peaceful. that not going to happen here because chanting the mantra is not only you get the immediately the feel it's just the reaction of your mind it give you okay oh go for sleep it's not good this is not the mantra for you you shouldn't be practicing this is the reaction of your mind whenever you do the self practice you feel the pain you feel sleepy you feel lethargic you feel especially when you're doing the self meditation and your mind your mind is also not you know feel okay with it you feel bored it's very boring you don't feel entertaining but when you are doing in the group you feel entertaining because other people's energy when you see then you gonna you know feel Im- immediately you feel the energy around you but when you do the self meditation the projection of the mind reaction of the mind is so loud that that gonna hover on you instead of uh, uh, you know take um, focusing on the chanting the mantra you think about oh i want able to get reaching towards that river through the meditation you want get any vision it's just a procedure okay yeah. see come within you automatically it comes to you it's not generated by the meditation it's initial level mind is creating all kind of problems to you and make you feel everything which you never experienced even some people feel wow wonderful but again that is not because of the meditation because of their desire some people feel so lethargic so lazy because their mind you know wanted to be like that that is why this thing happens but meditation is the method to control your reaction of your mind okay the mind which is giving you the reaction sometimes it's so happy sometimes so lazy and now he is using the method of the meditation mm-hmm. that nothing is going to change here but eventually gradually you come to that level when your mind take the speed back and stop bothering you and you are able to do the practice of the meditation easily comfortably okay it's not bothering you anymore is tired fighting with you okay so don't worry if you feel lazy lazy lethargic sleepy this is only the reaction of mind or sometimes you feel so energetic wow wonderful again that is a reaction of mind 
okay it's nothing okay. related to any kind of meditation this yeah. is just you want that's why these things happen mm -hmm. okay it's the striving for something the attachment that I, it makes so much sense and actually you know it's not realistic to be around people all the time so the energy you know as you're explaining it it makes sense it makes so having to have that kind of self motivation that self um yeah just, yeah um i hope you I, understand this thing. yeah I, I had one more question. I hope it's okay. I yesterday, I think it's yesterday, we looked at the Buddhist um, chant, and uh, last the time before we looked at the Om Namah Shivaya. So um, there's a few questions of this. I thought, is it similar, like yogic, um, uh, Hindu yogic kind of philosophy and the Buddhism? That was one thing. And then the other thing I wondered is the words are obviously different the meanings are probably quite different so what is the purpose for these chants in the first place is, is it is there any significance on the words or the sound is it is it the sound vibration that they're creating in the ah. body okay, okay. Uh, you missed the previous session dear have you missed the previous session of the meditation I can't. I, I I missed the one where you said you were going to do the Om Namah Shivaya introduction no, to that. I'm talking about in the starting when we started the chanting the mantra. I introduced why we are chanting the mantra. In that, I explained in very much detail that chanting the mantra is why we required it and what is the benefit and what happened when you are chanting it. So that session I'm talking about. Have you oh, missed that? I I can't remember. <laughs> I think Sorry. I've missed that one too somehow. I'm not sure. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. So don't, don't miss the class yeah. because everything is connected, you know. Everything is connected to the other things. So the course is beautifully designed. Especially the meditation classes is connected to one by one. Uh, uh, though you asked the this question that what is the importance and significance related to the chanting? Understand chanting is just creating the vibration. I keep telling, focus on the pronunciation because words are connected with the sensation and the pronunciation. Okay? Forget about the meaning. We don't look for the meaning right now because meaning should be connected within you when you do the practice. In chanting, if you the Sanskrit mantra, there's a many words which doesn't have any meaning. They don't have the meaning, which symbolically attach some meaning to it in order to make the common people to understand. Okay, But why should we are chanting? In order to create strong vibration around you. Like, Om, Makkah chanting when we did, right? Ma sounds so loud that even it doesn't have any significance in your life or any kind of meaning if we don't attach. But still you are able to feel the vibration if you properly chant in it, right? So saying, oh, you feel the vibration throughout your body immediately. Forget about the meaning. I'm, I'm keep telling, meaning is not so much important, but the pronunciation is a very important role because word is connected with the sound every word has the sound but it is you who makes interpret the meaning right but this is the whole science of the uh, sound sound science it means creating the strong vibration around you so your brain your mind immediately come under your control that is the whole purpose of the all the chanting briefly if i'm telling i've given the whole lecture on that you can go through it, right? Mm -hmm. But in briefly, if I want to explain, this is like yoga. When it becomes yoga, it completely changes whole lesson. When you pronounce differently, it's going to lose the vibration. It's going to lose the essence. And certain kind of whatever meaning, whatever your purpose of practicing the yoga, it's completely going to change. Okay? That's the importance of chanting. Any word and especially the Sanskrit world. Even I talked about why we are chanting in the Sanskrit, right? So Sanskrit is a more, uh, you know, rational, logical, and complete language, and more purified language, okay? So that's why 
and it has a strong vibration every word is strong it's not related to the religion at all it's related to the vibration each and every word having a strong vibration and that's why we chant in the sanskrit language so briefly i have to explain to you understood you yeah thank you so it doesn't matter if it's buddhist or the yogi and that doesn't matter okay doesn't matter at all i'm just teaching you the method various methods of uh, you know uh, chanting that's it and why we are having so many chanting because of we have so many intention and so many desire so if you have intention to earn the money so oh, let's chant the lakshmi money mantra if you have the month you know desire of i get the success so you have the chanting of that also if you looking for the materialistic peace materialistic fulfillment of materialistic desire you have chanting for that also no matter but asian yogis are very clever they instead of they know that this this person gonna you know with in order to fulfill his desire spiritual materialistic physiological psychological he gonna chant something so they have given the each mantra for everyone do chanting it at least you're going to control your mind so no mm. matter whatever desire you have so different kind of chanting we created in order to fulfill their intention but actually they are reaching to the peace they are controlling their mind and they are that is getting the satisfaction contentment and following the automatically they following the path of the yoga not without even knowing it okay okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much thank you so let's start the session <laughs> uh, i uh, come into the sitting position keep your back nice straight and uh, relax your body <clears throat> then please close your eyes and take a deep a long slow inhalation Thank you. Thank you. Now in here for the three time on take a deep breath. the vibration and sensation from the both sides the both sides and from the eyes very slowly while drinking looking at your palm gently open up your eyes with a good smile and thank you So welcome to the meditation class here. <clears throat> so um, we talked about in previous session 
about uh, Om Mani Padme Han, the Buddhist meditation. And today, the previous session, we talked about the chanting, the pronunciation, and how you're going to chant, right? So, the technique of chanting we discussed about. I hope that is very much clear to you. Today, we're going to learn about the meaning of the meaning of Yes, meaning is also a little bit important because it's going to allow you to set the intention. But yes, pronunciation play with the first important role and then meaning later on. Okay? So, Om Mani Padme Ham. So, Om, I have already explained you in detail. But the Lai Lama, according to the, I hope you are familiar with this name. The Lai Lama is the world famous yogi, right? Uh, so, he explained Om Mani Padme Ham. So, Om is basically representing here the Lord Buddha enlightenment attribute, the so characteristic of the Lord Buddha. So, Om is with this one table. I've given the five lectures on the Om, right? So, here, the fear, it's representing the universal consciousness. The universal consciousness, which is attained by the Lord Buddha. That is represents by the own. So the practitioner who is having the impurity, impurity is like their, they have the impurity of thought. They have anger, you know, frustration, anxiety, jealousy, greed, hunger. These are the impurity of the mind. So this impurity of mind, body, Impurity of the body is the action certain time you just hit somebody. You just hit somebody. And through the speech also, you just use unconsciously. You just start using the abusive language. That is the impurity of your speech. Impurity of your action, your body. When you are hitting somebody, you are, you know, said to use the wrong body language and you might hurt with your action like uh, throw the water somewhere or you break intentionally something that to the body action the impurity of the body and impurity of the mind is greed anger frustration anxiety depression these all are the impurities of the mind transformed into the purity purity of Buddha. Like how Lord Buddha is attaining the enlightenment. He's not born pure, right? When he starts practicing the meditation, he starts purifying his defilement of the mind. So slowly when you chant the Om, then you attain the purity of your mind, purity of your body, purity of your speech. So all these three, you are performing action to these three. All these three actions would be become pure. So right thought, right action, and right work. You wanna start, you know, doing it. So when you chant home, that is the reminder of Lord Buddha, how Lord Buddha lived his life. Lord Buddha is performing all these three actions. Right speech, right action, and right thought. Okay? Then come to the Om Mani. So how you attain that purity explained by the next label, that is a Mani. Mani is a jewel. The jewel. So jewel, like how the jewel is pure, attain the purity. You know, jewel is so pure, so sparking, so crystal clear. Have you seen the jewel? Earlier it was full of the impurity, like how you polish the gold, how you polish the diamond. Diamond go through the many strong procedure of the purification, of the refinement right and then it attains the purity so money is showing like be like a girl become like a girl then you're gonna shine even if you wanted 
a jewelry it's mixed in the impurities of the dust impurities of the coal impurities of the other metals and then through the procedure so meditation this chanting mantra om mani padme hum makes you pure like a jewel it's gonna put all your impurities and refine you and you are able to attain the purity and how the jewel is become shiny same way you can shine so mani mani matlab jewel means jewel then om mani padme padme is lotus so lotus is carrying the jewel so it is a lotus in between there is a jewel okay so lotus is carrying the jewel here lotus is representing uh, the method and the tech um, so unity of the method and the wisdom here is like you are aware of the thought by practicing this chanting the mantra i would be attaining the purity so this is the wisdom okay this is the thought which give you the wisdom and then you chant when you chanting that is a method this is the technique right you are chanting correctly so method the thought come and then you are able to chant then you are able to chant and when you are chanting that become the method so wisdom and method is inseparable when thoughts come to you to become the attain the purity then we apply the method and this is the inseparable and that represent by the padme om mari padme padme is showing you representing you symbolizing this thing that wisdom how lord buddha attained the wisdom by practicing chanting or some kind of meditation same way you gonna attain through this method that is the padme okay so next is hum hum is in it basically the universal again sound which means the method which can transform you completely and that impurity the hum hmm it means this is the truth hum is saying the universal fact in front of you universal reality in front of you by chanting this mantra when you keep chanting this mantra you gonna attain you gonna you know purify all your impurities and you attain the purity like how lord buddha attained so this is the hum which gives you symbolizing hmm, this is the fact this is the reality this is the truth by chanting this i would be attaining this purity i would be attaining the enlightenment i would be attaining the wisdom which is inseparable with the method wisdom comes with the method method give you the wisdom these go all together i understanding this thing when you practice the technique any technique i'm saying not this any technique any way any meditation you are practicing automatically your mind gonna become calm relaxed and you see the clarity around you your vision would be clear you are able to see the clear picture and you are able to perceive the world the way they it is without your own imagination without your subjective implication your thoughts biased thought emotional thought you gonna observe the world the way it is that them by through the chanting the mantra and through this mantra you attain that purity i hope this is the um, you all are understanding me word by word <clears throat> any doubt till here guys any doubt here and uh, no it's okay i think <laughs> no ask if you have any question related to the understanding uh, please ask 
I think you said not to focus too much on the meaning when we're doing the chanting, but it's good to know, isn't it? So it's it's not yeah, that yeah, when we're chanting, we're not thinking about the meaning, we're just chanting. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. I why I'm saying this thing you have to understand because we are talking about the science of the sound, right? When you create certain kind of strong vibration, your mind is automatically gonna come under your control. Meaning will give you a little bit direction. Okay, why I'm chanting? Because your mind wants something out of it, right? It's the human tendency. Why I'm doing this thing? Why I'm having? Why I should have calcium? Why should I have? I have protein. So <laughs> every time you know, your mind wants something. Your mind wants that. What I would get it out of it. That's why meaning is. Uh, tell you to motivate you. Okay, when I'm practicing, I'll get these kind of friendship. And when you're chanting, it it give you uh, it allow your mind to set the intention of one kind of thought. Because thought is coming to your mind. Many thoughts are coming into your mind when you're chanting. So what happens when you understand the now today? Now you know the meaning, right? Now see, you have certain kind of thought in your mind. Okay, by chanting, I would be able to attain the purity. Now mind is start thinking about because mind required one kind of thought. So meaning, what will do to you? It give you setting the intention in your mind. Okay, you will get this benefit. Okay, you will get that benefit. So chant, keep chanting. More you chant. Mode you get this thing, so that's why you required to understand the meaning, the, especially the interpretation, which is given by the yogi, those who already practice it. But meaning, even you also gonna when you keep chanting, you come up with your own meaning also. It could be possible. You have your own meaning. Okay, that can be possible. Thank you. So there's other many other interpretation of the Om Mani Padme Hum. <laughs> so like uh, many meanings, you know, uh, given by the many great yogis. But we learn the one of type of the meaning, and uh, eventually, uh, when we have more time, so we're gonna discuss about that thing. Also, but uh, I think today, today meaning is is clear to everyone. So we move to the practice. Shall we move to the further practice? Yes, sounds good. Let's start the session. Come into the sitting posture. Keep your back nice, straight, aligned, relaxed. Now, bring the pen to work. I have already given you the instruction how you can attend. Right? Keep in your mind that don't give any pressure while chanting. Naturally, the word you are pronouncing, not so loud, no, not so less. Moderation in your voice. And make sure your body remains calm and relaxed. Now, gently go into your asking, go into your posture.
Now take a deep, a long, slow inhalation. Deep, a long, slow exhalation. Now, once you are ready, your mind, your body is ready. Start chanting. Om Mani Padme. Om Mani Padme. Om Mani Padme. Om Mani
Now, go into the Triya Shri Salim and chant Om Mani Padme Nam within your mind.
Now, really truly make your attention towards the natural thought. Observe the natural thought. Now, take a deep, long, slow motion. Deep, long, slow exhalation. Inhale and exhale. Deep inhale, slow exhale. Take a deep, a long motion for the three times in, along with the shanti, we're going to find our meditation session. Thank you for the long. Grab your hand. Grab your hand. Place on your eyes. Feel the warmness. Very slowly while blinking, looking at your hand. Gently open up your eyes.
感激自己的信任上帝。嗯嗯。哦。嗯。Any doubt, any difficulty? When you're practicing, I felt really, really tired, <laughs> sleepy, and、um, yeah, like I was drowsy. Can you feel it was just really impactful? Pardon? I told you this is your mind doesn't want to do the meditation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That. You want to go sleep? Let's sleep. Don't do meditation. Just sleep. Yeah. Wait. Happen. It will take time. Don't just take the pledge. I gonna do this practice. No matter. If you feel sleepy, just keep chanting. Keep chanting. Eventually, your mind start giving these kind of reactions. Okay. At least afterward, you feel you start feeling wow, wonderful. Like you. Then another kind of reaction it will be, which you feel oh good, I'm liking it. But keep practicing. You have to practice. Then mind come under your control. Otherwise, it becomes fighter. It gonna fight with you. Don't do this practice. Don't do that thing. I don't like it. I want to sleep. I want to do other things. I want to do party. Not meditation. Meditation is very very boring. Very boring. <laughs> Is not entertaining at all. So, but this is the only method. This is the only method through which you can control. There is no other way. Believe me. If there is other way, I would be following that. <laughs> I would you mean the other intention? You mean the chanting is the only way? No, no, no. no meditation. All. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you guys. Meet you in tomorrow's class. Keep practicing. More you practice, more you gonna learn, and more you get the your own way. So keep practicing. This is the only way. This is the only way. Believe me, the way to attain the little peace in your life. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.